And after two and a half hours sitting and having lunch with Roy and hearing his entire story, he laid it out for me. I'm sick of listening to trolls. I'm sick of listening to people that think they know everything and they really don't know jack shit and they just make it up. And, you know, we were comparing notes about some of the things that people say about me. You know, there's not a lot of negative stuff out there about me. There's some. It's total BS. Roy told me some of the things that he'd heard, you know, out on the internet about me, which was just total fabricated BS. And, and I told him many of the stories I'd been hearing about him. And he just laid it on the line. He said, Steve, I'm going to be 100% truthful with you. He says, we're both you know, retired military, we, we both love Trump, you know, we, we're patriots, we love the Constitution, we want to save our nation, and the trolls are going to always be saying this or that, and, and trying to deceive people, and so we did a lot of note comparing, you know, we, we, we uh, he showed me things, I showed him things, and, uh, we both got a real good feeling about what's going on. I said, on. can you prove it? He said, yeah. And he showed me. He showed me the evidence that he had. And you guys know how I operate, right? What, what is my deal? Say it. That's right. Preponderance of evidence. What would a reasonable man or woman conclude about a subject based on the preponderance of evidence? And so, again, I'm, I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to meet with Roy. Now, you want to hear something weird? Roy lives in Wyoming. Roy does not live in Utah, okay? Now, the only reason he was in the Salt Lake area this weekend is because he's got a dental appointment tomorrow with his long time. He used to live in Utah. He was a Murray police officer. He told me all about that. So, Roy didn't hide anything from me. So, those of you that think he, you know things about Roy that he didn't tell me, then have at it, friends, because the, the agreement we made right up front when we sat down was that we were going to be totally truthful with one another, and we were going to sh openly share information, and that's the way I feel. I, I feel like that's what happened, okay? So, get this. In 19... Now, Roy is originally, I found out, from College Park, Maryland. He attended Brigham Young University, graduated from there with an ROT. He was on the ROTC scholarship. You know, he, we talked, he told me all about his Army career. I told him about my Marine Corps career. But in 1971, we were both at the military ball at Hargrave Military Academy in Chatham, Virginia. I was a student at Hargrave. Any of you ever heard of Hargrave Military Academy? Well, I went there for a few years, and in 1971, Roy and I were at the same military ball at the same time. Now, you tell me that's not a freaking small world. Very, very small. Anyway, friends, I'm out of time. God bless you all. Have a great week. Thank you for watching this video, and please get the word out that Roy Potter's a great guy and that he and Steve Motley are going to be working together. Please share my videos, subscribe to my channel. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now. Uh, we, the conversation yesterday covered so many things. It covered his life. He talked about how he grew up and the things he did in the military and, and otherwise. And I told him about mine. And uh, we just had a great time. We had breakfast, and it was really a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, um, where, where I thought it was really cool, and I brought it up on Twitter, and he brought it up on his uh, broadcast yesterday, was that we've crossed paths several times in our life, lives, not, not just in the military. This is crazy. Uh, and I wanted to bring this up on, on, on YouTube this morning so that you would know about it uh, in case you missed it. Uh, I'd show you the picture that I took at this, this situation, but it's on my phone and, and it wouldn't come across very well. But what happened was, is I was a senior in high school, and I was in Naval Junior ROTC. I was, it was my, and this event happened in my senior year. I had a friend, a very close friend, who was a senior at the Hargrave Military Institute in Chatham, Virginia. And 
What he did was is he invited me uh, down to the military ball uh, for uh, the school uh, and to take part in that. And uh, I had to come in uniform, of course, because all the people there had to be in uniform, um, except maybe, you know, the local mayor or governor, whoever would show up. But so, I, of course, I wore my, my uh, naval uh, junior ROTC uniform, and I took my girlfriend, who later I married, as a matter of fact, and, uh, and we went down to Chatham, Virginia for the ball. And there's a picture of myself with my girlfriend there uh, at the ball, at where, at where they took the pictures for everyone, you know, the little portraits they take of the couples. Anyway, during the conversation, uh, I find out, Steve mentions that he was at Hargrave Military Institute, that that's where he went to high school. And I go... Is, is, and I, I was thinking it was Chatham uh, Military Institute, but Chatham is the name of the city. And he corrected me on that. He says, no, it's Hargrave. I said, that's right. It's Chatham, Virginia. Hargrave. I said, I went down there for military ball. And he goes, what? And I said, yeah, it was 1971. And, uh, you know, I went with my girlfriend at the invitation with, uh, from my friend. And I was there. And he goes, I was there. I was there at that ball in 1971. Whoa, you know, we're both, we're going, this is freaky. This is like crazy. So, uh, you know, I, I just had to tell that story again. I'd show you the picture of the portrait of, of myself and the girlfriend, but it'd be kind of hard to, to put it on here right now. Uh, anyway, I sent it to him. I, as soon as that was all over, our meeting, I, I went and I started digging, and, and one of my kids actually found the picture and sent it to me on the phone. So uh, th that was just incredible. Well, we've also p crossed paths apparently in South America um, and possibly in the east, the, the Far East in, in Asia. Uh, it didn't look like we'd crossed any paths uh, in Europe, I don't think. But, but, you know, who knows? After we get to talking some more, we might find out that's the case. And there were some other things, but uh, that, that, that crossing paths in high school, that was crazy. <laughs> I was like, like whoa, uh, you know, that was, that was almost providential, like it was, it was meant to happen later. And I think that's how we both felt yesterday. I, I certainly did. So, uh, you know, as you must, most of you know, I went on a trip last week and I was heading down through Salt Lake City. And so I started putting out a couple of YouTube videos. I was kind of calling Roy out. I was going like, hey, Major Motley wants to meet with Lieutenant Colonel Potter. You know, meet me at high noon or something crazy just like that. And, and the word got around, and Roy finally got the word. And so we, we connected. You know, we, uh, we exchanged uh, phone numbers. And next thing you know, I was coming back up from San Diego, and we actually met in person on a Sunday afternoon in Salt Lake City, and it was kind of a miraculous series of events that brought us together because he really wasn't supposed to be there, and, you know, I, I wasn't really. Hey, Roy, come in here and tell your side of this because, you know, we both felt like there might have been a little divine intervention or something. Well, what, what are you thinking, man? Tell the folks what's on your mind. Well, uh, thanks for that. I... I, as as you know, because I told you, and I think I even mentioned it on a, uh, a video or two, uh, it definitely seemed like uh, providence to me, uh, and and probably for a lot of reasons. You and I, as I stated, have crossed paths since we were in our teens, and we didn't even know it. And uh, I won't go into all that, but you know, we we've, we've talked about meeting at, at a, a military a high school military ball at, at the academy and. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we've crossed paths in, in the religious, uh, spiritual uh, system uh, and certainly in the military. Uh, and, and so, you know, it, it was almost like, uh, you know, these two, these two long-lost brothers <laughs> who had gone through these same experiences needed to come together and uh, probably for a number of reasons, and I think a lot of that has yet to be uh, uncovered, unveiled. But, but certainly one of them uh, ties into what you and Jesse have both been talking about, and that, you know, that's this, this whole thing with my past because, I, you know, I am, a, I, <laughs> I am a piece of work, boy, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, I've, I've had experiences that most people, uh, you know, never, never have or never think about having. And, uh, 
you know, it, a lot of it was controversial, but, but uh, because of the reason I did those things, and there were, and Steve's aware, uh, aware of a lot more that, that, that's happened than, than just the normal religious stuff that everybody talks about. Um, and that has been a guiding light for me, despite the fact that I got dragged into several, you know, churches, some would say cults, um, and that during my search, but, but it opened my eyes. And so, you know, Steve followed a similar path, and yet, you know, when, when he reached out to me, um, it was because uh my my understanding um was not understood by a lot of other people. I don't know if that's made a big difference and I'm, I'm kind of bouncing around here. I don't mean to do that. But I I think I think it was kind of like to be a witness. Uh Steve, I I think you're designed to be a witness. Um I what you see with me is what you get and having met you, I know that when somebody meets you, what they see is what they get, and those types of people, when they meet, they click, and uh, they're they're they basically witness for each other, and that can be a good thing for them, but it could also be a bad thing because then people think they're, you know, this new word that everybody's throwing around these days, colluding with each other to cause some mayhem or or, or deceit. Steve Molly drove, guys, all night through a snowstorm to meet Roy Potter. Dun, 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 and he didn't he was unsure about but he was unsure about Mr. Potter too. But once they got together, they had a good conversation. But hell, don't let me Steve touch on that, brother. Tell us about it. Well, the bottom line is I, I really wanted to meet Roy, you know, because a lot of people have through the months kind of associated the two of us together. Maybe it's the retired military thing. But, you know, if, if Potter goes missing for a few days, I get emails wanting to know, hey, Steve, what's up with Roy? Where is he? You know, I mean, this has gone on for months. And I figured, well, at least I ought to meet the guy, you know, and, and shake his hand and, and see what's up. So we did. We we ended up uh, meeting in Salt Lake City, and you, you're right. I came through one hell of a snowstorm. It took, took me over three hours to drive less than 40 miles in a complete whiteout. And if you don't think God blesses dumbasses like me for trying to do that, let me tell you, he does. But, but anyway, I made it through, and, and the next morning I met with Roy, and we, we met for two hours. And the first thing I said to him was, I said, listen, there's a lot of stuff being kicked around on the Internet about you, about me. I said, can we just agree as two mature, grown adults to tell the truth to one another? And he said, yes. And so that's what we did. And so I sat down with him, and we had a, we had a good chat. You know, we found out our paths have crossed a lot through the years. I mean, he's from Maryland originally, and in 1971, he and I were at a military – I was going to – a military academy at the time called Hargrave, Hargrave Military Academy in Chatham, Virginia. And his girlfriend was attending an all-girls school in that same town, and we ended up at a military ball together in 1971. Now, that's kind of weird, but that's, that shows you what a small world it is. But anyway, the bottom line on, on Colonel Potter, I like the guy. He's a very likable guy. I don't know if everything he said to me is totally true. I don't know. And I, but, but my thing is, friends, I've always been a preponderance of evidence kind of guy. You know, I, I look at it as, okay, do I have enough evidence to say that I know for a fact this is what happened, yes or no? And in a situation meeting with Roy, I, I, he told me a lot of things. I told him a lot of things. But neither one of us you know, could produce the evidence that was re that would be required in a court of law to make a decision about anything. You know, I mean, honestly, that's the way it was. So we left, we shook hands, we agreed that we would be friends, and I, I, I plan to remain friends with Roy Potter. I'm not going to turn my back. I'm not going to meet with somebody and then two weeks later say, well, just because we don't agree. He doesn't believe in Q anymore, but that, that, that's okay. 
And he and we talked about that. And you know that's where real maturity steps in is when you can agree to disagree. Okay. Yeah. 